G'day everybody, and welcome back for some more Space Engineers modding with ACS stuff. Uh, I'm staring at my drones right now, and kind of um, thinking about the difficulty settings that I've got for ACS. Like, how difficult is it currently, and how difficult should it be across the spectrum as you play through any particular survival save. Um, one of the things that a lot of people uh, point out about me, which is not entirely untrue, is that I do like things to be difficult when I'm playing a game, but that's largely because I like to feel like I've overcome some sort of big challenge and I've overcome something that makes me feel like I'm, I've put some work in and I've done something cool and it's I get that payoff of struggle 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 success and i i'm worried a bit with acs that there's no real success to be had at least not until not unless you're playing it with the thruster mod that Graz made um and so i'm try i've been struggling to come up with ways of making that different um because obviously the biggest challenge with space engineers and capturing cargo ships is you capture a cargo ship you have a huge supply of resources um i think the thruster solution is probably my best solution to that and so i think despite the fact that it doesn't really uh provide us with the sort of success feeling without that and there will be some people obviously playing without that but I think most people who play with this mod will be playing on PC so I, I think even though I would like to add something more that says yay victory you've got something cool um, I don't think I can but that means that I need to kind of think through how hard of a struggle it should be for that reward of the thruster or for that reward of I actually managed to capture this thing um, and the reason I'm starting to worry that I've made it too hard is because I haven't properly captured a ship in Survival Impossible because every time I think about doing it I'm like oh that's hard that's really really hard how am I going to do that how do I do that as a solo player with Capac totally different co-op is a totally different ball game and is so much easier because you've got someone who can take out the drone that's coming and someone who can focus on the cargo ship. But in single player, that doesn't really work. And so I was kind of interested in opinions from you guys as to... <sighs> well, and also kind of, I guess, more than opinions, just thoughts on your experience with the mod as it exists as the rival AI edition and um, kind of how it's played for you also thanks so much Rad Nebula for 26 months <laughs> awake at 4am uh, since it's 6pm for, for me I'd say I'm doing better than you 4am that's not nice um, <laughs> thanks Alflington thanks for the prime sub Uh, hey, close slammer. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a troublesome one. And yeah, Nenra, you're right. What even is a good reward? I think, I, th I think at the core of it, the best reward we can come up for in Space Engineers is something that's slightly better than the blocks we currently have but not so much better as to obsolete them. Um, something that's better enough that we can desire it, but not need it. And I think I think that's where Graz and I fell on how much of a bonus you get from those specific thrusters. Um, I'm just staring at my drones thinking about how much harder these need to be or how much easier they need to be to fight 
Yeah, Chipsticks, it's proprietary technology. It's stuff that only ACS has, and the only way you can get it is by capturing cargo ships. Yeah, so they're like 10 to 15% souped up versions of the blocks. Would the reward be different for single player versus multiplayer? No. Uh, that is beyond my abilities. Um, but the... Um, the question of whether you balance for single player or whether you balance for co-op is always a difficult one too. Uh, so the drones are intentionally not fitted out with any of the special blocks for one reason. The drones, if capturable, will do more damage to your base with their corpses than with their guns. Um, the way I have all the drones set up is when their remote control dies, they should self-destruct and leave very little behind. There are circumstances where bits of drone do get left behind. That happens. Um, but most of the time there's nothing left, which means you don't get left with divots around your base where they've crashed into the ground. Uh, Alphalington, that's exactly what the thrusters are. They are a block you can only get from the cargo ships with a special uh, component that means you can only get them that way and you have to collect a set that way. Yeah, Nenra, I think I think that's kind of where I've I've drifted with ACS. ACS used to be something that was very very difficult to play against, and that was because it was scaled to my level of base and construction that I had in Survival, maybe, and the level of construction and shields and whatnot that Capac and I had in Survival Unlikely. And that's meant that it was very difficult to play against and kind of overwhelmed a lot of people and that wasn't really ideal. Um, and so I think... Um, I think that was a bit... I think I went too, far, too hard too fast. So the new ACS as it currently stands in terms of difficulty uh, is that it has um, how do I describe it so basically at the outset if you don't engage with the assertive ships spaces whatever you find um, if you keep your distance from them they won't touch you you can spend all of your time doing your own thing so you do choose the difficulty in that setting once you start engaging with them though they start taking the fight to you on rare occasions and then I want that to build because I think it's all well and good to give the player co control in the early phases over whether they're going to get attacked but I think at some point for the player to engage with these drones engage with the cargo ships engage with the AI enabled bots whatever it happens to be if you're going to engage with something it needs to have some agency of its own for you to feel connected to it and so at some point they have to basically flick a switch and go enough's enough this person is a problem at this stage I don't know how to flick that switch back off when the person's no longer a problem um, <laughs> but at least we can flick that switch on and I do that through uh, the standing system because you start at a rare kind of level um, and so that's sort of how it works um, but that's kind of how it works at the moment so once you engage with the cargo ships the first ones that you attack will sometimes spawn a cargo uh, drone to support them sometimes not some but most of the time will and then I'm trying to think of like tonight what I came into this trying to work out is what I want to do for the next stage up 
and how far do I want to take the difficulty so I have an idea of what's in between and how we spread that out so that the escalation of threat is progressive rather than sudden. Um, the Lenjet, the stream for Prison Tycoon, I'm planning on starting at about 8, so in about an hour and a half or so. Uh, no, Mara, there's no... The standing system is incredibly basic. It is, once you do bad thing to me, I hate you more. There is no other interaction other than that. No other interaction even possible other than that. Uh, El and Elminster, no. ACS doesn't pick a fight with you. It doesn't do that anymore. It won't do that anymore. And that was intentional because I wanted to combine it into one mod and I knew some people didn't like the way that the installations worked and don't want to have to go through the whole process of figuring out blacklists and whatnot. Um... But yes, they do get shot when they attack you, but the the thing is, at the moment with the standing, it's just kind of a single switch. So your standings with assert start at minus 1,000, and when you get below minus 1,350 or 1,400, depending on which one it is, but it's basically the same margin. The difference is minimal. Uh, but once you flick over that switch, it then becomes a hostile party that any time you get close... So if you still can keep your distance, then you're fine. But anytime you get close, they'll send drones. Yeah, exactly, Chip6. Only space pirate allows gaining standings. I'm not sure the stuff that you were talking about TFE actually works, because Lucas wasn't feeling confident when I spoke to him about all of the standings stuff. Because Keen didn't set the standings up well enough for modders to be able to play with it the way we want. It's um it's something that may change, but I don't I don't know what I would do if we had a situation where you could improve your standings with a cert. Like, how would you do that? What would you even do to placate them? Sent plushy gifts. <laughs> Like, I think, I think it'd be cool if the, this is totally off topic, but I think it'd be cool if we could have, um, the economy stations as a neutral ground where you could pay money to factions to make them not hate you. Because then there'd be a reason to have, uh, neutral locations that you can go to. Because obviously you can't have an assert station that you send stuff to because it will blow you up. Um, but anyway, um, this is all beside the point because I'm not going to be messing around with more complexity around that side of things. I don't really want to spend the time doing that because it's already been several years since I started working on this mod and I'd like to release it. <laughs> I'd like to get it to a point where people can use it beyond the test version that I released like two years ago. So I've really just got to think about, do I want to make a new drone that's more difficult or do I want to just spawn in more of these drones as things scale up? I think in space we can have some more difficult drones um, and more varied ones. In Atmo we could possibly scale up some of the weaponry on the drones. That could be an option. AI enabled NPC on economy stations that you can talk to to bribe. Yeah, exactly, an NRA. Exactly. That would be amazing. Um, 
actually. One thing I should do. Let's start with let's start with messing with the space drones and giving them some different weaponry. So if we got those four. Oh, the guppy drones are something I've got to work on soon. They're going to be what's protect the specific guppy ship. It's just I accidentally made a guppy um, ship, a uh, cargo ship, into a drone once, and it was funny so I decided that it, they're going to have their own special drones that look like them. This was an angry, angry guppy. Um, I'm so going to smash these things apart when I try and take out their weapons. We could up one of these to have rockets. Though that looks a bit weird because they stick out a long way. Which is annoying because that thruster is what's stopping me from pushing it back further. Uh, might have to pop that out and lower it down a bit. Grab the... Down. Because I'm thinking having rockets, having some artillery... I wasn't thinking of having anything with, um, rail guns. At least not on a drone. Although I was contemplating it at one stage. Yeah, Beer Seeker, something, something like a safe zone generator where you buy... Uh, you buy bribes or letters of recommendation from a trade station and you put them in a block that's somehow connected to a particular faction and then over time it processes those things which slowly increases your standing. Um, that, that could work. I don't I don't know whether something like that is possible with but the, the concept in general kind of works. It's kind of like um, in a similar kind of vein to the idea of buying a land right in a castles type game in so, sort of like medieval engineers has with its um, claim block sort of thing. Drones with rail guns, but once they fire their thrusters and gyros turn off and begin a self-destruct timer. Hmm. Uh, these drones should be able to fire a rail gun at a moving target. At least as well as a Reaver can. Uh, potentially better than a Reaver can because I cheat with the thrusters in a similar way to the Reavers, but these ones are tiny. Uh, most of the Reavers that I've been shot at with a railgun are big grids, so they don't turn as fast. Yeah, Barrack Star, something complex like that would be cool. I don't think it's possible, though. Something where you take control of a signal and broadcast your own or something. I, I just don't... From what I know of Space Engineers, it doesn't feel like it's something that we can actually do. Unfortunately. Uh, see, I was thinking, like, maybe some of these should have auto cannons. <laughs> Even though autocannons don't really end up doing more damage, Gatling can cannons kind of put out more, but at least it adds some variety. You know what? If I'm going to put a railgun on something, I should put it on this little firefly. <laughs> so it's something so tiny... That when it shoots the railgun, it... Oh, actually, that's... Even in small grade, that's way too big, isn't it? 
but maybe I could make a custom drone that's kind of designed around the idea of, yeah, it has a railgun, but it's really weak and it's going to really struggle to hit you. Yeah, because there's like a... I don't... I personally don't know if it's possible. TFE might know. Um, whether MES has some sort of timer-based thing you could do with uh, it having taken a shot that then means that it's now on now that's a thing but I don't know uh, no beer seeker I have zero plans for weapon randomization I dislike weapon randomization for my ships and drones for the reason that I don't then get to control how hard they are. It's... I personally think there's more to gain from having more ships than there is to having more variants of a ship. Uh, Barry, I have a plan. I would like to play some more Icarus in the future. I just kind of... I played it a bit too much. And so I needed a bit of a break. So that's why I've been playing it. That's why we started playing Ark and doing some different stuff. I just needed a bit of time away because I was struggling to enjoy it the way that I did when we first started. The assault cannon's the artillery one, isn't it? Ish. It's the heavier one. Yeah, Demon Works. I prefer to I prefer to have that degree of control that you get from actually customizing the weapons yourself. Um than having weapon randomizations. Just personal preference. Uh yeah, you you can post links, Barrister. Uh, I wanna do this Firefly. We've got something that'll fire missiles, which are more for drama than anything else, because they don't usually hit. Oh, right. Yeah, I think I know what image this is. this one's going to be on that link. It'll be the giant weapon on the tiny thing. Yeah. There are limits. Uh, Lucas has done better with the um, weapon randomizer these days. They, there are limits to size and things, and you can define all that stuff. I still think for what my vision of ACS is, though the weapon randomizer is not uh, does not fit with my vision. Oh, I wonder if I can do this. Get that out of there. Uh, get that disconnected elsewhere. Another way. Oh no, that thruster goes sideways too. Dang. Right, that's going to be a bit fiddly. I'm trying to think of how I can do this, but I was thinking if that could sit there, how weird would it look? Hmm. Weird. Oh yeah, that's a that's a good point, TFE. Uh, railguns on drones, they'll run out of power. Yeah. Okay. Won't, I I think I'll um <laughs> I'll keep away from uh larger weapons for these drones. The drones really weren't built around the concept of having large weapons on them. Yeah, that's a fair point, Mara. If the if the power could be used as a way to limit um, how many shots they get with a railgun. A railgun look under here. And now it looks like he's poking his tongue out. 
angry monarch. <sighs> Although, as you can see, the thrusters just all went out. Because it doesn't have enough power. <laughs> hmm. This could be problematic. Uh, for the space-based stuff, or Kiora, um, yes, I am going. I am planning on having some larger drones, p potentially even some large grid drones. For Atmo, no. Uh, the aforementioned reason of divots in the ground around your base and things crashing after you disarm them uh, is the reason I don't want large. Because. Large will be a problem. Uh, this could be modified a bit. I think I need to delete this one and copy another one. But I reckon we might be able to make the Monarch capable of carrying a railgun. Being just a really nasty little thing. Which kind of fits, given it was unintentionally designed to look like Rigel, who was a nasty little thing in um, Farscape. Yeah, nasty but funny. True, Chips. That's <laughs> true. And Farscape was a good show. Um, it need to be like a big battery at the back. So I could give it a bit of a tail, I guess. Stuck a big battery there. And then try and fit some armor around it. <laughs> yes, you fought helium. Uh. Uh, there does not appear to be a railgun recharge setting. It either does it or it doesn't. Current input 3.6 megawatts. Alright, with that many batteries, it can still fly. to make it look interesting. I think I might get rid of those little ones. There's too much neon going on around here. And move these thrusters back. Turn on symmetry mode. <laughs> Railgun was too strong, it made my stream buffer. Right. Not ideal. I do not have the undo mod running, Eisen. This is a very old save, so I didn't even think to set it up before I started streaming. I should have, though. I really should have. Uh, 
I may even reload the game to add it at some point. May. We'll see. <laughs> hey, I forget to use sneaky sounds if I'm not really paying attention. That's my own mod. I think it's my most subscribed mod, too. I think these are going to have to get bigger. fit in with the rest of the style that I've done on this thing so far. Is that going to be enough? Helps, but I think it still feels... This still feels tacked on. It doesn't feel like part of the rest of the ship. So I think I haven't quite nailed the style that I had before. There are mods like uh, Screen Gunk Be Gone and Space Just Got Real that mess with the bloom. I uh, don't think I'm going to mess with that side of things myself. Because <laughs> it sounds like messing with those settings is a pain. Like a real pain. That's right. Could work. These blocks didn't exist when I did this before. That is too much. light. Oh, that's... Oh, that did weird things on the other side. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's going to be too much. Let's just do two. It's going to be weird looking. Oh, no. What's going on? What? Yeah. <laughs> Misclicks. Misclicks. Really should add that mod. <laughs> really should add the undo mod. That would have fixed it there. give it a spoiler then. Yeah, the Capac could do a lot more spoilers now. Uh, small Grid Neon is a thing, but it's also centered. And I don't want to put small grid neon on this one because I'm going to have to put it on all of them. It's a boxy little thing, but that's kind of working. The battery's nice and exposed, which gives this a nice weak spot. Um, 
Not sure I'm happy about this back end though. Something about it doesn't feel quite right. Are these? Uh, maybe if I. This and that there. And then. These. Yeah, now that's something. Oh, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, Mara, the um, the neon doesn't draw power. It needs power to shine, but it doesn't actually draw any power. So, I think I think the Monarch with the railgun would be one of the harder drones, and would be. Would only really be harder to fight than a large would only be sorry the only drones that would be harder to fight than it would be a large grid drone oh thanks demon works i'm glad you're enjoying scavenger hunt um i'm enjoying playing it because i get to role play because i don't know whether eisen and tfe are going to punish us if we don't buy into the roleplay. <laughs> oh, it, it means that we get to really roleplay because they can they can play it as though things like camouflage matter. Um, which I think which is kind of what I wanted out of it. It's what I kind of thought would be cool. So we got a Monarch that's upgraded. Firefly hasn't been touched. Well, Elminster, the more recent episodes are longer. Um, tonight's episode is going to be released later because I'm streaming. And I don't like to release a video when I'm streaming because that seems counterproductive. <laughs> um, but it is getting... The next video is coming out tonight. Um, just not while I'm live. Probably immediately after. What should I do to the Firefly? I mean, honestly, what I probably should have done is just taken these two cannons out of the Wasp and stuck the railgun in it. But I still, I think that would have been still too long. Uh, and yet, the... The episode, most of the episodes in um, in Scavenger Hunt are gonna be longer slash have more in them. Um, it, as many of you probably know, Moosey's actually been doing the editing for that one, which means it's it's a bit of a learning curve for me having someone do my editing and talk them through what I would do. And things like that. It's it's tricky. It's something to learn and something I need to practice with over time. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of the Firefly with just a single missile launcher. It'll be the most ineffective drone ever, um, but it'll look spectacular as it things explode as it goes and runs around trying to shoot you. That side of it will be funny. <laughs> Magron, you know why. You know why they're on a mission to destroy. I mean, no one really knows why, but it's a thing. Uh, do I need to give this railgun ammo? Given all my things ammo. I don't know if I need to. I need to spawn some though. Uh, do, 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 do. Then 
I don't think this will matter, but there we go. Because the way I think it's set up, uh, MES will just keep magicking up extra ammunition. Yeah, so, so the way that the drones currently work is at the easiest level, you'll only get one drone. Rarely you'll get two. At the medium difficulty, you'll mostly get two and rarely get three drones spawning. Um, and then I was thinking it hard, still stick with that, mostly get two, occasionally get three, but now you can sometimes get these ones in your groupings. Um, and then at hard, it's four drones. Or a large drone. It's kind of what I was thinking. And a ship with a full cargo container with ammunition that it can't, that it can't use as a juicy target. Um, I kind of want all of the cargo ships to be something that you might take on, not just specific ones, because otherwise then there's no point designing the other ships because all they'll be is a marker that moves across your HUD. Um, it's why the... One of the so... One of the things I've been working on is this. So this is my checklist for all of the different prefabs for the cargo ships. Oh, juicy target to go boom rather than capture, I see. Well, I've got warheads on some of them, so that's pretty much as good. Uh, no, Twisted One, you can't get the magic ammo. The magic ammo only exists for the NPCs. But basically, what I've got as my checklist, because I, I went and I reformatted this and I've added in this section. So these are the codes I need to put into containers for thruster loot, depending on the type of ship. Locker loot, armory loot, cargo container loot, and cockpit loot, which is like coffee and a pistol and stuff. Um, so it, in the future, you'll be able to find a little bit of, um, bits and pieces of stuff on the ships to make them feel like they're actually moving goods rather than being empty because they've always been empty because the ship itself is your reward for capturing it. Um, right. That was kind of what I wanted to talk through. So there's this bit, and then this this page is my things I want to achieve before I release the mod. So this is the reason I'm talking about behavior today, and the difficulties is to create what's going to be medium, hard, and hardest, but we'll probably just have medium and hard. Um, I need to expand the chat options at some point soon, and then create a spreadsheet of that, because then I can get uh, the Patreon supporters to submit recordings to me, which will be useful because then we can have voice recordings for every single chat line that ACS has, uh, which would be kind of cool. And uniquely voiced and variants of each one. Uh, I'm thinking of limiting myself to probably two audible variants of each line because I suspect we're going to end up with a lot of chat lines. Uh, but if I limit myself to that, then it makes it hard to add in the stuff that I really like, which is that I've got some other languages that people have submitted, which was really cool. Uh, then this is also sort of what I'm working on now, the higher difficulty drones and the large grid drones and selecting which ones inhibitors. And then I want to 
by add a whole bunch of images. I want to make up a whole bunch of different images to go with the mod uh, that then we can go and decorate all of the cargo ships with. Uh, ACS already has escorts, yes. Uh, you don't you don't need them merge blocked. Um, my my things already do. Um, they already have escorts. I have escort drones that I was messing with the behavior of recently. That was one of the things I was um, fixing up <laughs> in the more recent streams. So if we have a look at spawn groups at Mo Medium, you can see you can occasionally just have a drone that comes after you. Uh, but what we've got is the Bison Troop Transport position at 000, zero, zero for, and that's relative to the spawn location that it creates. And then a Mayfly drone, which is 50 meters X relative to that. So that means that when this spawns in, you get both a Bison and a Mayfly and the Mayfly flies along beside it. If you get too close, the Mayfly breaks off and attacks you like a fighter as it should. So that's one of the in difficulty increases. In fact, I wonder, I wonder whether the escorts shouldn't be a medium or whether the behavior should be that the, um, Easy is spawn one drone. Medium is spawn one drone but has a an escort. Hard is has escort, spawns two drones, and then clang slash boss level is has escort, can spawn crazy drones. Is that too gradual? And now I see why developers hate balancing their games because it takes so much time to think this stuff through. I do have I do have a degree of randomization in how the drones spawn. So if we have a look at say the Atmo easy behavior and we scroll down the bottom here to our spawn group we have a spawner which can spawn either the mayfly, the mosquito or the wasp. And then we have a different spawner option, which is sometimes triggered, which either spawns a mayfly, a mosquito, or a wasp and mosquito. In fact, might, because this is easy. Might make that chance of the extra one a little bit lower. Could you have a random chance of a disproportionately difficult encounter? I think like I like the concept of that, that sometimes it just goes all catastrophically wrong. You've just you've just picked them on a really, really bad day. Uh, so, but I don't think I want something like that in there until I've had some feedback on whether people like the current difficulty level, because if you add something like that, it muddies the waters dramatically because people will be like, it's so hard. This is what happened. And you're like, 
that's an exceptionally rare event. That's supposed to be rare and supposed to make you go, ah! And then the next time you attack them, when you finally feel like you're prepped, you can go in there and feel all super powerful because they don't actually spawn anything and you're fine. Uh, but I think having that before having play tested it would be a mistake. Uh, so, I think, I think last time when I was doing this, I don't actually have any medium behavior difficulties. Just got the base, easy base civilian, base at my medium. Ooh, that hasn't been added since 2021. I think that means that's going to be way out of date. Yeah, Granitia, I'm kind of... Yep. You're trying to decide which player and then trying to think through the psychology of that player and figuring out whether you... how you want them to feel as they take on the drones. Um, and what you can do to elicit that feeling within the limitations of me. Because <laughs> really, I'm the biggest limiting factor here. The number of options Lucas has with MES, the number of things I could do, is way well beyond the things that I can do. Hey, Matcha. Well, so, KB, that kind of wouldn't work. So, if, with the way that Space Engineer's standing works, it only gets to minus 1500 and then it stops changing. So, unless there was a way to detect uh, bad, the player having done something aggressive against a cert in a period of time, um, having it be based on the standing having changed for things to chill out uh, would probably not work for when they chill out. I think I just muddled a whole bunch of words together that sort of formed an idea but didn't really form a sentence. Oh, that's a that's an interesting idea, Elminster. Could you increase standing by one point every some number of time? Even if there were hostile encounters, because you because standings drop so quickly with a with combat, it wouldn't matter. So. Um, say for, say for example, you've attacked a cert, you've gotten your standings all the way down to minus 1500, you're like, I'd really like this to chill out now, please. Um, if you run away from them, and every half an hour your standing improves by five points, it's going to take... Uh, like 15 hours before they chill out. And yes, in-game time does get weird when you mess with the uh, time slider. So that's an issue. Uh, but I mean, that, that would be a workable solution. Dolly, everything I hear about factions from the people who mod them and have tried to mod them is factions and standings are broken and they... But I... I... I don't have the skills to know exactly what's being talked about when they talk about this stuff, so I don't know how well it does or doesn't work. Um, 
paper, so I'm just like, eh. Oh uh, yeah, a little bit like classic Grand GTA Chip Six. Yeah. Well, uh, Grenadier, it is. It's fair to assume what players are going to do in Space Engineers because there are limited options available to them. You can shoot the thing, you can use a jump drive to get away from the thing, or you can hide under voxels from the thing. That's it. So, if you know there are only three potential player options, it's pretty easy to figure it out. Uh, yeah, TFE, that'd be the way to do it as well. Make sure it never gets above negative 500. So they're always hostile, but at some point they stop chasing you. Uh, that might be something... Let's add that to post-release stuff. Um, timer to slowly adjust standings toward minus 500. No, Rizal, I didn't forget any of those. Ramming counts as an attack. Running without a jump drive doesn't work. Boarding action is attack. <laughs> so there's still there's still those three options. Because um, ACS still defines two of those as an attack, and one of them isn't a viable option. Because... Uh, Oh, uh, actually, what, running is running without a jump drive is a viable option for the drones, but not for some of the things. Yeah, but Razul, if I start thinking about people's mod lists, then there's no end to the variability, so there's just zero point of thinking about the game in any terms, but vanilla plus this mod. If someone wants to add a mod and the behavior gets weird with that, that's on them, not on me. Because um, thinking about other play players, other mods is just... Ugh. Nah. I think... I think it's hard enough to balance a game without that. Or to balance an NPC mod without that. That trying to do that is just a waste of your time. Uh, what was I doing? So, what I was thinking of doing was... First off, I need to name these guys that now have better weapons. But also, what I wanted to bring in was something from another save. Yeah, Stolly, I've looked through the Reaver stuff. I've copied some of it for some of my drones and things. Yep, that's the plan, KB. <laughs> Add undo to my creative mode ACS saves. Uh, I think... I don't know if the drones are in this save. I think it's in an older one where I've pasted it in. Where is it? Installations, installations. Cargo ship and base build? No. Cargo ship's final designs might be in this one. This is an old save that I shouldn't be editing ships in. That's why I didn't bother adding undo to it. Uh, not exactly, Marcus. I didn't really want to do a boss because a boss in Space Engineers is just a way to kill your sim speed. Uh, 
Yeah, he's in this one. Thought it was. Fight the print. Okay. Yeah, so one of the things with Space Engineers is the bigger the, like, one of the things with ACS that I've always tried to do is make it so that it can run on most people's PCs that can play Space Engineers. Which is why there's a PCU limit for the submissions to the mod. It's why I've kept the ships relatively small, relatively simple, um, so that when they spawn in, you don't have people, like, if you've got, if you're, if you happen to be the one with a slow PC or if your friend does, you don't have them going, hang on, the loading thing's still going. Hang on. It's got to be something big. Hang on. Um, the only... Because most of the ways to make a boss is to make something big and difficult to fight. You can do cheats like what, T what TFE is suggesting and just have it so they don't take damage. Um, and I think even though that feels weird, it's probably actually the right way to go for space engineers. Um, even though it really does feel weird to me. <laughs> You're welcome, chipsticks. Uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta think about, like, I played with Capac for years with his PC being proper computato. Um, You don't want to make those people not be able to use your mod. <laughs> I can't remember which ones I've added the undo to now. Base build. I'm sure we're good. Yeah, exactly, Yarden. Although, I don't know how much the invisible ninja ship turrets were Computato or Space Engineers multiplayer back then. We can blame a fair bit of that on Space Engineers. I just want to load into this save quickly because I want to just check whether the fight bright is the color scheme I want it to be. What is your favorite dinner and have you had it yet? Uh, random question. Uh, yes, I have had dinner. I had very early dinner because I've... I felt like it. Uh, I think we've switched out all of the... Yeah. We switched out all the colors on Jex's ships to make them a little le less bright. So. That's why I brought it in here, because I want to match it against these. on your mind because you can't have dinner and you're watching the stream. Fair enough. Oh. Come on. Don't be like this. Do I have a paint gun in this safe? Yeah, I do. Favorite, favorite meal. Oh, I'm I'm much more of a glutton for uh, variety than I am a any specific uh, 
meal. Most of the time. So if I have the option between something that I know I like and something new and completely different, I'll usually choose new because it might be my new favorite thing. And I'm willing to take that chance. Though I will admit, when the day is right, <laughs> I, I have been known to enjoy a dinner, quite enjoy a dinner of um, either good cheese and wine or good chocolate and wine. Don't think the pink thruster was a good idea. Uh, Marcus, at this stage, no, I'm not doing the salvage trickery that Lucas does. Um, I don't think it's needed for ACS. I think ACS is uh, stingy enough as it is. Calamari, I'm thinking of seafood, and then as soon as I think it's seafood, I think it's sashimi, sushi. How good the sushi restaurant is that the owner knows me at and always gives us bonus stuff when we go there. Like every time I've ever gotten takeaway from there, she gives me a little cup of sake to go home with. Um, <laughs> just awesome. Chocolate and wine? What's wrong with chocolate and wine? It's not monstrous. A good dark chocolate and a good red wine it can be a pairing made in heaven. Just like a good cheese and a good wine. <laughs> yeah, it's the... It's the first time I've ever been on a first name basis with uh, someone who owns a restaurant. It's really nice. <laughs> it's really cool turning up to a restaurant and getting special treatment. <laughs> like, they've been turning away people because their kitchen's closing and we, we turn up and she's like, ah, it's alright, we can fit you guys in, we know what you want. We'll just start making it straight away. Good cheesy wine? No, good cheese and wine. Cheesy wine. Oh, that sounds horrific. That's, there's a special kind of hell for someone who makes a cheesy wine. It's not so good when you're on that level with a fast food joint. <laughs> True. That's probably less than optimal. I kind of like the little shiny bits of the interior wall. Just kind of breaks it up and gives it a little a glint of something. But I need to modernize this sucker. What the? Oh, that's the assert thruster. Whoops. Oops.
This was obviously made before these thrusters existed. Um, a lot of the ships that are, were submitted to me came about in 2019. Long, long time ago. Go these thrusters actually. Let's go warfare ones. Yeah, that works better on the front. Definitely. Well, you can have notes of rub. You have notes of rubber in wine? That doesn't sound right. Mastermind. How's it going? Rubber and wine, that rare tarmac blend. Ugh. Ooh. Ooh, I think Jackson would be very happy with that change. Oh, actually, speaking of Jackson, um, we're going to be doing, not streamed, <laughs> but we're going to be doing a bit of a, a test of my Lego stream setup tomorrow. Um, see how well the space works and see how well we can, uh, he can talk me through his moves so we can play our table, our planned tabletop Lego game mobile frame zero. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah, hammer down. These do spawn with the turrets at max range. <laughs> Spray some American cheese onto a bottle of wine and watch everyone scream. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just... That spray cheese is probably so much plastic, you could probably, like, preserve wine with it. So if you've opened a bottle, you get the spray can, you spray it into the not into the top of the bottle, and you fill up the airspace with the cheese. I wonder if it would actually interact with the ch with the wine at all, or whether it'd be such a different material that it effectively <laughs> just be like. Um, expanding foam to stop the ox the air wine interface so that the wine would then be preserved until you somehow figure out how to get the cheese out um <laughs> i do wonder because i can't imagine that that stuff is um missable with wine although some of the flavorants probably are What did I just join? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to claim to know at this point. That was probably one of the weirder things I've said on a stream. Alrighty, I reckon the fight bite's ready. Fight bite, fight bright is ready to go. Blueprint. Cool. Uh, actually, maybe it should be in this cargo ship one as well. Nah, I'll put, just put it in the drone one. Hey, Ecto. How's it going? Uh, I want space 
No, I want drones. Where's my drones? I need to rename this. I don't know where... Oh, yeah, I think down on the planet I've got the Atmo drones. You have invented Flint Lockwood spray-on shoes. Flint Lockwood. I can't do that guy's voice. Although, I do like that that movie has a Steve. Oh, ah, so, <laughs> Nuki World. I'm, I'm down with whiny cheese, just not with cheesy wine for some reason. Although, I'd have to taste it first. Mm, wait. Wait, what? I do have one? Huh? How many fight brights do I have? Maybe we did make one. Oh, I think Jackson made an updated one. But this was pre the industrial thrusters. Because this was for the escape from purgatory finale. So, a lot of Jexum's uh, ships here were actually the things we fought against in the finale of Escape from Purgatory. Kind of like that we did these inverted. We did the blue down the middle and I did the grey. Uh, Sicarius, I have played like 4,000 4, hours? Four and a half? I don't know. What does it say? 4,573 hours of Space Engineers. Oh. Oh. That happened. <laughs> Vod cow and vod cow cream. Oh dear. Let's stick with the one that doesn't have a door and looks like a drone. So, uh, let's turn this into a warship. Huh. Fascinating. I think I need to turn damage off. Thanks, JMD. <laughs> Thanks for six months. Oh. Yeah, there's a sensor and a warhead on there. Quite clearly. <sighs> Let's try that again. How did I not set that off while painting? That's what I want to know. <sighs> okay. Dealt with. Oh yeah, this thing's piped too. Uh, 
so I'm thinking I'm thinking a railgun is a bit mean. I'm thinking large grid drone. That's kind of mean enough by my standards with this. Um so we'll just put a rocket launcher on. So we got rocket launcher, railgun or art or artillery. Artillery I think on the front of this just doesn't just doesn't sell it the same way as having a rocket launcher does. Uh, the sensor driven stuff I don't think I banned it from the submissions but I think I just generally encourage people not to because I removed it every time anyone had one. But this was this was submitted super 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 early. Um, in the submission process. Yeah, Demonworks, that's, that's kind of why I think, um, the Large Red Rocket Launcher feels good, because it does look impressive. It looks like it can put out a lot of hurt. Uh... So if we've got a fixed look rocket launcher, I reckon we instead go with double gatlings. Twin gatlings. Too many <laughs> interior turrets to count. Three. Uh yeah, I think that. I think that lines up well as a, oh god, I don't want to face that sort of drone. But to fit with the colour scheme of the drones a bit more. Let's paint it with neon. ACS have Lucas's kamikaze tendencies. Uh, which kamikaze tendencies do you mean? I, I don't think I've really set up any of the ships to do ramming. Um, some of the ships do have warheads that are intended to uh, be there to destroy a large thruster that the ship has. But that's it. Just gotta finish fix that bit that I painted pink by accident. Ramming when guns are disabled. Uh I'm honestly not sure whether I left that in or not. Dunno. Stolly, the Digi's paint mod should be vanilla. It's so much better than the vanilla paint method, and it's so much better as a survival paint tool because you have to make paint and it's a tool rather than just dunk, 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 dunk on stuff. Um, it, yeah, it absolutely should be vanilla. In my opinion. Yeah, Build Vision is, I think, one of those mods that's awesome. Uh, the way that it interfaces with stuff. But if you were a game designer building a game, instead of me pressing control and having a magical HUD appear up there, it would be so much cooler if my wrist thing came up and the display was on it. So that... That detail 
if my arm came up in front of the camera and I saw that detail on my wrist. That would be incredible. That would be... It's kind of the diegetic element of having it in the game world would make it really, 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 really cool. Oh uh, yeah, Amy, I've been streaming on Twitch for about two and a half years semi-regularly. Yeah, or arm came up in holographic display, that sort of thing. But yeah, something diegetic with the arm and... Because um, that means you know when you're looking to highlight because the arm comes up and then it goes away. Just little things like that would draw you into the world a bit more. Um, I don't have a better example on hand, but I know there are better examples. But I really like that Ark's map is diegetic. It's in the game world. So when you're in third person, you can't actually see the map. You have to go to first person so you can see it. It's really cool. Yeah, animated interaction I used all the way through Survival Maybe, but then it broke. It broke a few of the other animations. I quite liked that when you connected to a, a control panel, it showed stuff up. It made you act, move your wrist up to do stuff. Yeah, the, the neon's kind of ruined the walls, hasn't it? Might need to change them out for the new ones in Neon. Oh no. There was a gyroscope there that was attached to this. Too many squares? Oh, I quite like that with the squares now. Yeah. Just got rid of the um, Star Wars Imperial symbol. Oh, why my PC keeps doing those little stutters? Not happy with it. Hey, Captain Arthur, how's it going? Hard Space Shipbreaker has great in-world x-ray vision. Yeah, but... Like... I think we can all remember, even if we can't remember exactly which game it was from, but you can remember those times when games have made the HUD a part of your game world. Um, I've been I've been watching some YouTube content on game dev and stuff, and the, the example that's always brought up is um, Metroid, because I think you're you're in a mech sort of you're in a robot suit, and the HUD is actually slightly curved to imitate it being on your helmet visor. Hey, unuseful. And Fallout's Pip Boy, yep. I think it just. It's one of those little touches that just brings you into the world a bit more. What 
is showing up. Oh, that is. Okay, we're gonna fight right. Uh, no, I'm not using the MES difficulty levels. I haven't learned how to yet. It's, well, it's a fight bright. It's bright. It fights while being bright. Not that it fights the bright. By being dark. Uh, Magron, there is an option to make sound muffled a little when the helmet's closed. It's called realistic sound settings. Make things... Uh, Pretty sure realistic messes with the uh, helmet open, helmet closed. I, I'm not 100% sure that it does do the helmet open and close, but realistic sounds in Space Engineers does a lot of stuff like that. Realistic sounds does that until a mod breaks it. Yeah, chipsticks would know. <laughs> what what Space Engineers needs well, one thing, something that would be really nice with Space Engineers is first person view changes that change when you open and close your helmet helmet closed vanilla view helmet open screen gunk be gone closed, vanilla Open, gunk be gone. That, it, that would be just. It'd give you a reason to open your helmet. It's a really subtle reason, but a reason enough that a lot of people would do it. There is a mod for that, chipsticks? Really? Tell me where. I would like to know more. HUD disappearing when you open your helmet. Uh, I can see reasons why that would be logical, but I think it would also be a reason why you would never open your helmet. Because if you... If you make it so that your HUD is only available when your helmet is shut, you're never going to open your helmet. Or I would never. Because <clears throat> you need your HUD. In Space Engineers, when you're building, you really need to know what block you're selecting. Um, until we have a way that instead of having the HUD the engineer pulls up their wrists so that you can see stuff and so you have an alter alternate way I, I don't think it'll work um, I think I think as a player that would be really irritating to work with Could change the position of the HUD, though. Because the helmet doesn't have to open all the way up. Or you could change the engineer model and have just a little, like, 
very lame Google Glass thing over their eye. So that's where your HUD comes from. And that way it's explained and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, completely agree, Pug. You need the diegetic interfaces if you're going to get rid of the HUD when the helmet's closed, the helmet's opened. Otherwise, the, I would never play with the helmet open, except for the fact that I like having a clear screen. But yeah. Uh talked a lot and rambled a lot and have a little bit more of an idea of where I'm going but at least we've got this drone ready to go and we've got a few more drones uh got more do I still have the drones down on the planet I think they're in this safe yeah I do oh I still got the giant ones yeah you're never gonna see the light of day again I'm sorry buddy Unless you, unless I've managed to turn this thing to a, into an interesting cargo ship. I had an interesting, I had an idea about how this, all these like alien-ish, insectoid, large shape drones were going to work, but uh, they really just cause lots of voxel deformations. Yeah, I so it would be cool if you could change colours of lights or even even just of lights uh, when targets are detected by some of these things. You probably could do that, actually. You probably could change the lights. The paint would be harder, but uh, the lights could be relatively easily changed, I reckon. Not by me, but I imagine people would be able to do that. People. <laughs> Not me. I know my limits. Alright. I try to know my limits. So, I'm thinking I will probably switch over to my next stream in a second. So I think I need to let some of these ideas percolate for a bit and um, see what I can come up with. Uh, see if I can come up with a definite escalation plan of the difficulty. Can you add music to play when a player gets close? I don't like to do stuff like that, Hammer Down. Um, adding music can cause other content creators' issues. Um, adding music can be really distractive, distracting, and adding music for myself as a content creator can be really annoying because I edit which means if the music is playing I have to play that whole sequence perfectly through with no edits <laughs> no McGron you never have to face this huge rocket firing thing dropping on my base again and again not anymore uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time but I have learned my lesson
Oh, jeez. It's just started pouring here. We had three spawn in sequence. The firing never stopped. It was a race of repairing my turrets and mining more magnesium to make more ammo. Yeah. Yeah, they... They seemed like a good idea at the time. Sorry, I'm just also right now trying to set up the new stream details. For what I'm doing next. It should now be updated. Um, <coughs> so. From a real believe look through the wiki, it looks like MS has an action that can recolor blocks. That's recolor blocks that spawn, though, I think, Yarden. Not recolor blocks dynamically. Um, you could have MES trigger a script on the grid or trigger a timer block on the grid that changes the light colour. Because if the timer block triggers a scripted a block to then change the light colour, you can do that. Um, so, what I'm about to do is go and play Prison Tycoon under new management. Uh, for those of you who are hanging around... Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Uh... This is uh, much like the Core Keeper stream I did a couple of months ago. Uh, this one's sponsored by Daredrop, uh, as well as the com the publishers of Prison Tycoon. Um, but Daredrop allows you to set challenges for me to try and do, which could get interesting, depending on how this game plays out. I played a little bit of it so that I... Um, I've got a bit of an idea of what I'm doing, but I'm kind of leaning towards deliberately being really mean to my prisoners RimWorld style, even though the game is very much not set up to be that way. So I'm going to start that in a couple of minutes. What I'm going to do first, though, is the thing that I've been showing off at the end of all my other streams recently, which is this. Oh, come on! Okay, I really need to set a local version of that file rather than doing this, loading the file from the NAS. It's, um, it's a little bit slow. That's better. Uh, yeah, I said that's that notification you got of the dare. <laughs> Man, I love these things. I'm so proud of how this effect worked out. Yeah, it's a Capac screensaver. I've been wanting to do something like this for my streams for so long. Alrighty, so I am going to briefly switch to my Be Right Back screen, just set up a couple of more things like sending out a tweet and the other things I gotta do. Uh, but I'll be back in just a minute. Let's go with this one. We'll just keep this going. 